Hello. Uh, here we were going to introduce sprites, which are essentially just images that are used for animation. We will find them in a drawing and animation part of the palette right here. We can see there are two types of sprites. One is a ball, which is just a very specific uh, shape, right, or specific image. And then in a more general sense, there are image sprites right here. Uh, that can be really anything, any image that we want to introduce into animation. Uh, before we introduce sprite, we need to define a space uh, that would bound uh, where the sprites can be animated. And that is our canvas that we discussed in the lesson number 12. So here we're just going to use it to define the bounds for animation. And since there's nothing else, we can maximize it here and basically change the height and the width so that it fills the whole space, right? Right here. Once we do that, we can introduce our sprite and we can upload whichever image we wish. Uh, for instance, here, let's see, we have this ghost. So let's use that. Say OK. And then we need to say that our picture for the sprite in the properties here is going to be this ghost. Well, it's uh, kind of too large, right? So we want to resize it. Uh, let's set this to 40 pixels in height and also 40 pixels in width, for instance. And that would be it, right? This is now our sprite. Note that uh, whichever image we introduce, uh, this is going to be considered as its orientation at zero degrees, which means uh, facing straight east is the zero degrees. And then we can rotate it at any orientation we wish, where the angle goes uh, counterclockwise. So 90 degrees would be straight up, 180. 270 and all the way back to 360, which is zero again, right? So just something to keep in mind. What can we do with these sprites? We can do many things. And just quick reminder, as what we had with Canvas, in terms of the event handlers, functions that can be executed, and also setting or reading parameters, uh, in very similar way, we have a, a relatively similar set of event handlers for sprites themselves, um, functions that we can execute, and also, as always, right, we can read or set uh, all sorts of parameters that are related to our sprite. So let's see, for instance, what can we do? We might want to drag our sprite around. So this is our event handler when image sprite is dragged what do we want we want it to follow as we drag it around right so then we need to set its motion let's go to the functions and pick, pick move so we want our sprite to move around as we drag it so that means that we need to constantly update positions of uh, sprite to the current positions as it is dragged around. So all we need to do is get our current X, right, and get our current Y, and that would do the job, right? So now, as we drag this sprite around, it is going to follow, right? Wherever we drag it around, it is going to follow within this canvas bounds. So that is one thing we might want to do. The other thing we may want to do is we may want to fling this sprite and then want it to basically continue moving in the direction that it is flung. And uh, luckily again, uh, there is event handler for that too, right? So if we pick this event handler when image sprite is flung, what do we want to do? We need to set its orientation and then we need to give it some speed. Uh, we can set other parameters as well, but this is the minimum we need to set. So we need to set the heading, right? We can pick any of these. And 
set change it here right to the heading and the heading we want to keep uh, the heading of the font right so again just as this current x and y we need just to pick or get this heading from the event handler that would define the direction of the sprite and then we need to set its speed so let's copy this and change it to speed right here and then we need to set the speed to some number which is defined in pixels per interval of motion which also can be changed by the way but we're just going to use whatever is set by default <clears throat> so this should do it right so as we fling now this uh, sprite it should continue moving in the direction that it is flung so uh, you would do it by finger right on the screen in principle but here we're doing it by mouse so a couple things to notice here as we flung this sprite you notice that it changed its orientation so luckily it is pre-built for us that as it rotates and it changes its orientation um, it adjusts also its rotation so we need to do we don't need to set separately a rotation uh, for the sprite to match its direction it is pre-built which is a plus uh, but on the other side you notice that as it reached the the edge uh, the boundary of our canvas is essentially in this case since it was under an angle it kind of slid under the boundary uh, to the corner or if it goes straight to the boundary it would basically just hit and stay there so this is something that we would need to address right if if we want this sprite to do something useful we would need to overcome this issue of the sprite that hits the boundary and basically just gets stuck there before we get there let's see something else that we can do as well so for instance we want maybe in some case we just want to give it a direction and let it go so uh, let's say we say when it's just touched so it's not dragged it's not flung it is just touched we want to define for it to move in a certain direction right so that would be say here we set the heading instead of this get heading we would define it and as we set these angles right let's say we want it to move um so let's say we go 270 maybe past 270 so it's going to go to the opposite corner let's say 300 degrees or so and then again we need to set the speed so we can keep this speed at 15 right so let's see what happens here now we're just gonna touch this right here and it's moving under 300 degrees and it's going to basically slide to this opposite corner and get stuck and this is the issue that we need to resolve right we need to resolve what happens how we continue using our animation uh, once our sprite reaches the border and this is something that's going to be addressed uh, in the follow-up lecture until then bye